And so there's a couple of things that come to my mind in relationship to this. One is the concept of moral injury. So I'll just bring that in. You know, I think a lot of times systems are looking at how, like, I think providers often feel the sense of the system's not recognizing that it's broken. And so they're telling us we just need to fix ourselves. And so I really like thinking about this concept of moral injury. And I think it's important for leadership in hospitals to understand this concept as well. So moral injury comes from the military. And what it means is that, you know, military providers or sorry, military folk that are doing their work are often put in positions that are maybe against their moral compass, their moral code. And it leaves them with a sense of not feeling aligned internally because of what they were asked to do or what they had seen or witnessed. We talk about that in healthcare as well, that there are these moral injuries that happen to physicians that are a part of what creates burnout and they come from systems issues. So one might be, I have a patient that really needs this drug, but insurance won't, won't approve it because it's too expensive. Or there's not a specialist that can see the patient. It actually needs to be seen right away. There's too long of a wait. Or a million other things that can happen is, you know, I think when, in COVID, one of the, to me, one of the most traumatizing things was who gets to be on a ventilator if we only have a certain amount of ventilators left and actually having to live with making those kinds of decisions. It's really difficult. And so that, those types of things are what create the burnout in the first place. And I think understanding that as a leadership team means that you're a part of the solution. Like that it's not just people should practice meditation to get better at dealing with their burnout. It's that the burnout is being caused from a place that, and again, some hospital leader, I think a lot of hospital leadership is also burnout. It's also been tricky for them. It's, you know, it's like no one had enough PPE to give to their people in the beginning of the pandemic. But, you know, what things can you be in charge of? So there's some really interesting work being done around burnout hotspots. And looking at them a lot like we look at patient safety, like what systems issues are happening in this department that has more burnout than other departments? And what can I do to address that as a systems leader? And I think the way that mindfulness can play into that is one, having the awareness of the big picture, they like that there's systems problems, that, that there's individual problems. And two, again, with mindfulness, we're learning to have a capacity to to be with the discomfort, to turn towards it, but also to not be as reactive. And if we're not reactive all the time, then we have this ability to have more choices, more options, and to be a little bit more proactive and respond rather than that kind of automatic habitual reaction that can happen. So oh, I love that you share that. I also appreciate that you highlighted leaderships, burnout, because I think statistically their their rates of burnout are closer to 68%, so really, really high right now. And I can only imagine it's from being put in some of those double bind positions. I think one of the most effective things I've seen healthcare leaders do, I do coaching with healthcare leadership teams, usually for bigger departments. And something I see them doing, which is so effective, is sitting down with their people just being willing to listen and hear the really difficult, painful stories. And what I see is that after you get over the like all the distress and all the dis discomfort and the hopelessness sometimes, there's usually creative outcomes that come from those kinds of conversations and they get really productive. But I don't think you can get to that productive, creative space Unless you've really dug into what's not working and what are the pain points. And I, I'm loving this idea of those burnout hotspots. That seems like such a cool way to target the areas that are struggling.